The month of Ramadan, as you all know, is over and that's why we're here. And for a lot of you, it was a great month and you're actually sad that it's over and you did more worship than you've ever done in maybe even previous Ramadans. And for a lot of you, this Ramadan was a disappointment. You wish you did better and you failed. And you look back and say, I can't believe that I missed the opportunity. And that's okay. At the end of the day, we have to have hope in Allah. And the fact that you're here now is a significant thing. You're actually fulfilling the commandment of Allah just by being here. This gathering is actually part of the purpose of fulfilling the spirit of Ramadan. The first thing I want to tell you about Allah in this matter is what He says Himself in the ayat of Ramadan. He says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ That is a principle from Allah. Allah intends ease for you and He does not intend difficulty for you. Yes, the fasts were long and they were hot. And there are people who are going through all kinds of difficulty on top of their fasting in the month of Ramadan. But even the idea of Ramadan, the name of the month comes from Ramad, which is Shiddatul Hur. It's actually extreme heat. That's what the word itself means. It doesn't seem like it's something easy. But Allah says, Allah wants ease for you. So the first thing I'd like to share with you, how in the world does Allah want ease for me when He could have just made me fast for one weekend or two, three days. Instead, He asked me to fast for 30 days. That doesn't sound that easy. But Allah says He wants ease for you because if you and I were able to do that, if we're able to sacrifice our bodily needs and our desires for 30 consecutive days, we've proven to ourselves and to Allah that we know how to hold back. We know how to stop our nafs. And so everything else Allah asks of you outside of Ramadan should be much easier now. Now that the door has been opened and you can eat, now it's so much easier for you to avoid what's already impermissible. And that's not just in the matter of eating and drinking, but it's also in the matter of relationships. There are relationships that are completely halal, but Allah blocked the door to them in the month of Ramadan while you're fasting. But now that those doors have been opened again, it's time to think, if I can restrain myself even in the relationships that are halal, then I have to go out of my way to restrain myself in the relationships that are not even halal. Some of you have those kinds of relationships. I have to check myself, you have to check yourself. Are we carrying those kinds of things? inside of us, nobody knows those secrets except Allah. But you'll be able to navigate that in a way that pleases Allah because He wants ease for you. And He doesn't want difficulty for you. This religion is not there to make people's lives hard. It's there to make their lives easy, to remove their burden. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا The second purpose of Ramadan, after knowing that Allah wants ease for me. لِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةً So you can complete the training period, basically. I added the word training in translation. So you can complete the count. There are some of us that are much better Muslims than others. And they say, oh my God, I wish Ramadan was like twice as long. I can't believe that it's over. You know, I'm so sad that it's gone. And there are other people here like, man, is it five more? Seriously? Seven, three more? Oh my God, three feels like 30 now. Oh, thank God it's over already. And you feel guilty because there are other people who are crying that it's over. And you're happy that it's over. Don't feel guilty. Allah is happy that it's over for you. Allah is actually congratulating you that you finished the count. It's okay. And that's a, that's a labor Allah put you through and He's proud of you for completing. It's like you graduated. So there's nothing to feel guilty about. It's something to celebrate that we actually were able to pass this incredible test that Allah had given us. But then the most important part. This is the first, Allah doesn't want difficulty for you. The second, He wants you to complete the count and be happy that you did. We're not here to mourn and cry that Ramadan is over. We're here to celebrate that Ramadan was finished. That's what we're here to celebrate. That's the point of this occasion. And then the third part of this equation, Allah says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ If you remember nothing else from today, just remember this part. And so you can declare the greatness of God, the greatness of Allah, in the way that He guided you. You can declare Allah's greatness in the way that He guided you. Now what does that mean? As we come to the Eid prayer, we chant over and over again the greatness of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wallillahi alhamd. The idea that now Ramadan is over. Why are you saying Allahu Akbar? You're saying Allahu Akbar because for 30 days, Allah was in fact Akbar in your life. You did make Allah the biggest priority for 30 days. And now it's over. And so now Allah is telling you, now that you're outside of Ramadan, can you show me that I'm still the greatest priority in the way that I guided you? Just like I guided you in Ramadan, you were waking up earlier than you ever wake up. You were showing up to Allah's house more than you ever show up. 
You were holding yourself back more than you ever hold yourself back. You showed in everything you do that Allah is a greater priority for you. That is the living example of Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar is not just something you say with your mouth. It's something you live. And you lived it for 30 days. Congratulations. Now it's time for you to live it outside Ramadan. Now it's time for you to say Allahu Akbar when it's over. And so can you truly declare Allah's greatness in the way that He guided you? Allah is asking you and me as we leave this month, to actually come back and read his book and to find out what his Prophet told us and to find out in which things have we made ourselves greater than what Allah taught. And we need to now make ourselves smaller again and make Allah Azza wa greater again in our lives. This is why the word is not Allahu Al Akbar, the greatest. That would just be a description of the greatest God there is. Yes, the only, the only one, Allah. But he says Akbar, which is tafdeel, it's comparison. Meaning in everything that we do, compare yourself, your priorities to the priorities Allah gave. Compare yourself, what does Allah want and what do you want? Is there, if sometimes they're in agreement and sometimes they're not. This is what he took Allah ala ma hadakum. And now that you have that sense, that you walk away with this, don't say, oh Ramadan's over, I'm gonna go back to being messed up again. God, I can already feel the shayateen hovering around. You know, the chains have been undone. And a lot of people won't even pray five prayers today. It's so sad. Like they're like, Eid, is, Eid prayer's done. And some of you haven't prayed Fajr. Pray Fajr when it's done, pray. Do it. Because that's like, it's like showing Allah, you were Akbar for 30 days, now it's time for me to be back on top again. No. No. This is time for you to show Allah that you mean business. Celebrate Eid, but celebrate it in the obedience to Allah. And if you develop that consciousness, then truly it's something to be grateful for. And so the ayah concludes, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you may be grateful.